OK, so we're going to look at a neat derivation for the integral of y equals x to the power of n, which actually dates all the way back to Fermat. So we'll just focus on the integral between 0 and some positive number a of x to the power of n, where n is a positive integer. And the approach is going to be quite similar to the familiar Riemann sum kind of approach, where we split up into rectangles and take limits as the width of our rectangles gets smaller and smaller. The only difference here is we're not going to split our rectangles up so that they're evenly sized. So you'll see here our first rectangle is quite wide, but then they get thinner and thinner as we go along. So how are we going to choose these rectangles? Well, the key idea is we choose some value of r between 0 and 1, preferably quite close to 1. And then we put this point ar on the x-axis here. So we're looking at our first rectangle just going between ar and a. So this is going to have width a minus ar for our first rectangle. And we want our next rectangle to only be r times as wide as this. This is going to get smaller because r is less than 1. So then this will be ar minus ar squared as its width. So that tells us then we need to go from ar back to ar squared for our second point to draw our second rectangle. Then similarly, we want our third rectangle to only be r times as wide as our second one. So multiplying by r, you get ar squared minus ar cubed. So we get this point ar cubed and so on. So we follow this geometric progression, a, a, r, a, r squared, and so on, along this axis here, to give us our rectangles, which we're going to use to approximate the area under the curve. So at the moment, it's not a very good approximation, but if we take limits as r approaches 1, this first rectangle will get thinner and thinner, and all of the other ones are actually thinner than that. So this will approach the area under the curve, and it'll be consistent with a Riemann sum kind of approach. So it does give us a reasonable definition an integral. So how do we find the area of all of these rectangles and evaluate this sum? Well, the first one, we know its width is a minus ar, and its height is just when x is a, y is x to the n, so y is just going to be a to the power of n. So the area of this first rectangle is a to the n times a minus ar, and for our second rectangle we just put in ar to the power of n, so our height there is going to be ar to the power of n. Then for our next rectangle, we've got ar squared to the power of n for our height. And similarly, we've got ar squared minus ar cubed as our width. So that gives us our third area. And so on, a pattern emerges. So ar cubed to the power of n is our height times the next width will be ar cubed minus ar to the 4, and so on. So let's just factor out some common terms here to tidy this up. So we can take out factor of a from this first bracket, we get a to the power of n plus 1, and then we're just left with 1 minus r in the first bracket. Then looking at the next term, we can take out a factor of ar here. So we can actually have ar times ar to the n, so ar to the n plus 1. And again, we're just left with a 1 minus r. So there's some really beautiful structure here. We take out a factor of a times r squared, and then we're left with ar squared, not to the power of n, but now to the power of n plus 1 multiplied by 1 minus r. Then here we can take out a factor of ar cubed, which gives us, instead of ar cubed to the n, we now have ar cubed to the n plus 1. Then we're just left multiplying by 1 minus r when we factored out our ar cubed, and so on. So now you can see that there's actually a power of a to the power of n plus 1, and there's also a factor of 1 minus r, which is common to everything here. So we can take out this, a to the n plus 1 times 1 minus r, and all we're left with from the first term is a contribution of 1. And the second term, if we get rid of our a and our 1 minus r, we're just left with r to the n plus 1. And for our third term, what are we left with once we get rid of our a to the power of n plus 1 and our 1 minus r? We have r squared to the n plus 1. But I'm going to write this as r to the n plus 1 squared. And for our next one, we get rid of our a to the power of n plus 1 and our 1 minus r. We've factored those out. We're left with now r cubed to the power of n plus 1, which we'll write as r to the n plus 1 cubed. We we'll keep going here, you can see that this is now just a geometric series. So we know that r is less than 1, so actually r to the n plus 1 is also going to be less than 1, because r is a positive integer power. So then we can use the formula for the sum of a geometric series here. We just have 1 over 1 minus the common ratio. And here the common ratio is actually r to the power of n plus 1. So you have 1 over 1 minus r to the n plus 1. So that tells us then before we've taken limits as r goes to 1, the area of the sum of all of these rectangles 
is just going to be given by a to the n plus 1 and 1 minus r all over 1 minus r to the n plus 1. And now to evaluate the integral, we just need to take limits as these rectangles get thinner and thinner, so as r approaches 1. And you'll spot here that when we take limits, this 1 minus r over 1 minus r to the n plus 1 term might look familiar if you know your formula for the partial sum of a geometric series. So if we had 1 plus r plus r squared and so on up to the nth power r to the n, the formula for the partial sum of a geometric series is 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So this is almost what we've got, but it's the reciprocal. So we could flip this and say that 1 minus r over 1 minus r to the n plus 1 is going to be equal to 1 over 1 plus r plus r squared and so on up to r to the power of n. So this is really useful now because to evaluate the integral we can take the limit as r approaches 1 from below of a to the n plus 1 and then instead of multiplying by 1 minus r over 1 minus r to the n plus 1 we can just multiply instead by 1 over 1 plus r plus r squared and so on up to plus r to the power of n. So this actually makes evaluating the limit quite straightforward because remember that n is just a fixed constant here. So we, when we take the limits as r goes to 1, r is just going to be 1, r squared is going to go to 1, r cubed is going to go to 1, and so on, all the way up to r to the n is also going to converge to 1. So we actually have in the denominator here just a sum of n plus 1 different things, all of which converge to 1. So when we take the limit as r goes to 1 from below, we indeed get a to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 copies of 1 there. And we've shown that our integral between 0 and a of x to the n is indeed a to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And we can generalise this slightly, as we can then take the integral between a and b, where a and b are both positive at x to the n dx. Just by splitting this up now, so we get this for free as a corollary, by splitting this up as the integral between 0 and b of x to the n minus the integral between 0 and a of x to the n both with respect to x, then we get b to the n plus 1 minus a to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1. So we can get this slightly more general result, but only for positive values of a and b.